Listen. I honestly want to just take a look at the first year sales of the Switch and compare it to other consoles and how they did. So let's go ahead and pull a graph for that. I believe we do have some numbers to take a look at because the Switch is, of course, Damn. the fastest selling console in the United States. Um, so if you take a look at the graph right now, we can see that the Switch <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Uh, it's Right now, these numbers are as of last month. Uh, so these aren't the final numbers, but it's probably well over uh, 15 million at this point, the Switch mm -hmm. itself. And then right next to that, you can see the Wii. These are all first year sales. Uh, the Wii had 13.7 million, PS4 13.5, and then obviously Xbox One 7. Xbox 365.9. So you can see like a, a sort of pattern here. The Switch is a very, very successful console. Oh, at the least Wii U. In its Where's current the Wii U? State. Uh, we don't, yeah, oh. we, don't, we don't want to talk about the Wii well, U right 3. now. Well, 3.9 million <laughs> units from the Wii U. So, you know, instantly just the, dif the difference in machines that are in their utility not that far apart, right? right? Like that like kind of portable screen aspect and all of that and the types of games that we see on these machines. But the Switch clearly telling a story why you should own it, what it can do that the Wii U never did. I, I feel like the, the mission statement for the Switch from day one just made so much more sense. Yep. The Wii U was never truly able to capitalize on what it was supposed to be. Especially coming after the Wii, it was like, well, what is this? Do I use my old controllers for it? Do I use my new ones? The answer is yes. To <laughs> sort of. Maybe. Yeah. And with this, this was so clearly defined as like, this is a new movement for us. This yep. is a new platform. Um, it's, it's got new games and old games, um, and it, it totally delivered, and I love it for that. That's, so the, the only caveat on, in that whole story is that the Switch is closest to something like the DS. Right. You know, out of all the consoles that are being shown and compared, the Switch is this true hybrid that could also be um, pegged as a, as, a, as a handheld, right? And, and so that's where I feel like it's not apples to apples, compare, like comparing this machine to the PlayStation 4, which, which has much more limited utility. It's a home console, you keep it at home. Um, but I mean, obviously the Switch does both and does both well, and so. I think that's a really good point because if fair. you look historically at Nintendo consoles, they're sort of neck and neck uh, in competing with themselves, right? Like mm -hmm. you, would you would have to say a lot, and we, we're still seeing it a little bit with stuff like Metroid, where like a game comes out and you're like, why isn't this on Switch? And for mm -hmm. the longest time during the GameCube era, the Wii era, they had very dominant handhelds at the same time. And for years on NVC, we've been kind of begging, hey, like merge these two lines, make them into one sort of cohesive conversation. And I think they're finally getting there, although there's still millions of 3DSs out there. So. I think sure. Pokemon will be the first example of that. Right. right? I was going to say, looking at those numbers without like a real big casual hit like uh, Animal Crossing or Pokemon, um, that's just going to keep... I, I don't even know where that's going to go. Because that's pretty much all like hardcore gamers and some casuals right now. Yeah. And let's not forget, too, that the Switch launched in March. It yeah. wasn't even a holiday launch. I mean, the holiday was at the end of that year. The Switch launched at the beginning of the year. So without that holiday push, it was still the fastest selling console in which, U.S. history, which, which is, is crazy. Which is really cool because they got to benefit from all of the sort of like, you know, the the big celebration that happens like financially around the holidays every single year. Um, yeah while still gaining eight, nine months of traction before that. And avoiding the shortage at Christmas, yeah, right? Yeah, I think they had worked out a whole bunch of nonsense too. Like no one was even having the conversation by November that the left Joy-Con wasn't working or like, yeah. you know, little, little things like that. That's like, true. All like, that stuff got out of the way in March. You know, we all sort of beta tested it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, good, it's a good place to be. Uh, yeah, and I think to Paris' point, I think people were so ready for there to be uh, no switches to be found anywhere during the holiday season. Uh, just given that that's how Nintendo has been the last mm -hmm. couple of years with, with systems like that. And uh, I think they did a just a bang up job of upping production, like meeting demand, and really cashing in and, and paying, like being able to provide the systems when people wanted them the most. Yep. So I think that was really important for them this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. What I've noticed too about the Switch itself is that it almost sparked this like new market or interest for accessories and customizability, almost in the way that like smartphones did when the iPhone came out. Like we had all these crazy cases coming out for Switch. We have different color Joy-Cons, you know. I feel like the customizability of the Switch itself kind of entices people, it gets people excited about it, you know what yeah. I mean? So that I, probably I, helps. I think that conversation is going to continue this year. I think, um, I think we're going to start bigger. to see, yep, mm -hmm. we're yeah. start to see a lot of different custom Joy-Cons. I think we're going to see maybe some classic ones. 
I mean, I had to like basically customize Super Nintendo ones <laughs> for mine, but I think they'll be selling stuff like that by the end of the yeah. year. Hopefully, yeah. like um, GameCube, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think each each person here has a set of custom Joy-Con. Yeah, right? like we've true. got the white ones on the table here. Some of us yep. even bought every Joy-Con ever made. That's like, that's, did nonsense. That? Who that's nonsense. That's uh, even like going like a house from, full of Joy-Cons, yeah. right? Yeah, like a whole, house of a thousand it's Joy-Cons. House of a thousand Just Joy-Cons. Just six colors <laughs> plus. <laughs> in, in each side, and, uh. yeah, got it, okay. <laughs> All right, well, final question before we move on to the next topic. Um, I know there was a lot of controversy initially when we first heard the pricing for Switch. Uh, people were a little off-put by it being $299, uh, $300. Do you guys, now that we have the game, or now that we have the console, and we, we've played it for a long mm -hmm. time, a year, do you feel like the pricing was fair? Do you feel like $300 was a good price? I don't ever actually remember being taken aback or, or oh, really? about the price. Like I, I three hundred dollars from the outset was seemed like right in the sweet spot for me. I oh, think man. I, I didn't think that it was like overpriced at all. Did oh, you I feel totally, like yes, I totally did. Really? Yeah. I mean there was a lot of conversation in, in the room out there when we were watching the live stream finding out about the price, thinking about how basically the life cycle of the Xbox One and the PS4 at that point had been going on long enough that you can buy those systems for the same price and they are much more powerful and, and you yeah. know and capable and have like much larger library of games they have much more access to third party stuff um, but looking at this as like I only have to buy this I don't have to buy this and the DS right. um, I was able to sort of justify I mean I was going to get it no matter what but uh, yeah I, I think that there was still a little bit of that sort of you know Three hundred dollars feels a little hefty. Yeah, especially mm. again if you compare it to the DS line of systems, right? Well, because and I think a lot of people look at the Switch and they still look at the Switch as primarily a handheld console. Right. So it was a little steep for them to jump in yeah. and spend three hundred dollars on a handheld when Nintendo still offers another handheld that has a lot of great games already and still apparently had <laughs> games coming to it for like a fraction of the price. Yeah, right? and, and you can get some models for seventy nine dollars. Right. True, yeah. Exactly. Or yeah, they do like the two DS for like fifty nine bucks, and it comes with like two games sometimes. It's yeah. Just right. Like, it's crazy. Um, Andrew Goldfarb, who's our news editor here, specifically said that he he said it from the jump, and he's been doing it since. But he was like, "I will literally never dock my Switch. This will only be a handheld." Yeah, he's only played Switch handheld. Yeah, in, in twelve months. Yeah. So if you look at it like that, it's like, yeah, that's a pretty expensive device. But also, I don't know. At that point, now you're competing against phones and iPads, which are hundreds, thousands of dollars at this point. You know, yeah, like they're hundreds of thousands, of hundreds dollars. of millions of dollars. It's very expensive machines. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think I think we all settled into it. Like the the thing is, the second we walked out into into the you know in, into high roll for the first time, it was like. Uh, who cares? Right. See, for me, it was holding the system because, mm. like, if you go back now and you hold the Wii U gamepad, yeah. you'll go, oh my god, it's so feels, shiny, yeah. plasticky, light. It, it feels, feels cheap. It feels cheap, right? Yeah. And then the first time we picked up a Switch, just the plastic, the way it's like slightly porous, like yeah. it just feels hefty and different. And like you're like, wow, this is like a piece of consumer electronics. This yeah. is not a toy. It's got it's got a really incredible professional build quality to it that I would say most Nintendo handhelds, or if not all, have lacked for a very long time. Outside of like a few things, like I remember getting the GBA SP when I first yeah. picked that up and being like, this is like a nice little piece yeah. of it. And they all yeah. have like the carnival sparkle paint and stuff, yeah. and this one doesn't, right? You're, like you're it, so right about the Wii U too, because yeah. when you pick it up, it, it just feels hollow. <laughs> and you're like, this doesn't feel like it has yeah. any power to it, and right. it didn't, yeah. you know? Yeah. You don't Tastes know the terrible though. Sparkle paint, do you? I don't know the yeah. Carnival Sparkle paint. It's like the little like self-driving car things. They all like uh, Carnival Sparkle colors. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. yeah, drop the cap. That sounds fun.